Dear viewers, in this video, we will understand about how to draw histogram in Minitab. In one of our previous videos, we have explained about the concept of histogram. Histogram is a graphical representation of a frequency distribution table, and it gives you a shape of the data, or it gives how the data gets distributed. What is the uh, spread? It is a graphical representation of the spread of the data. So I'll share the link of the video in which we have given the conceptual explanation of what is a histogram. So that video will be helpful. I'll give the link of the video in the description of this video. Now, as a second step, we will understand how to draw this histogram in Minitab. So for that, I have taken some example data here. One is from a Poison distribution, where in a chips manufacturing company, in each packet of chips, how many broken chips are there? So that data is count of broken chips. So that will be a Poison distribution. And I also taken two point of sale machines that a bank is planning to procure uh, from two different electronic companies. So how much time it takes for a transaction to get completed in a point of sale machine if we try to swipe our debit or credit card to make a payment. So that time is being measured for some sample transactions. And we're also going to see how this data can be used to understand histogram in a mini tab, right? So first we will understand how to draw histogram for a single variable. So I click on graph and then I click on histogram. And when I click on histogram, I have these options. So if you have a single variable, you can draw a histogram. And if you want to understand the distribution, you can go for this fitted line, which tells us the distribution. And we can also use uh, multiple graphs in the same scale to compare variation graphically. And I'll also, in this video, explain how you can draw lines in x-axis, y-axis, how you can fit a different distribution and see how this data is in line with an expected distribution. All these things I'm going to explain in this video. First, we'll understand a very simple way of drawing a histogram for a single variable, not worrying about what distribution it is or what kind of distribution it follows. We'll just draw a histogram for a single variable. So I'm going to select this option, click OK. And once I click OK, I'm going to select a single variable. In this case, it is the number of broken chips that I'm able to get in a pocket of chips. I select this. I don't select any other option. And then I click OK. When I click OK, I get a histogram. OK. So maybe just a minute. I have to make a change. So here I say distribution. Let me say, do not fit any distribution. Okay, so now let me click okay. Right, so this is the histogram that you get. And from our previous win, uh, video, you will understand this is nothing but a graphical representation of a frequency distribution table. You have three data points, which is falling anywhere between 3.5 to 4.5 broken chips per packet. So similarly, the size of each bar represents how many data points falls in that particular bin. Bin is nothing but your frequency distribution interval. So here, the tallest bar represents the mode of the data. And if the data is normally distributed, that will also represent the mean and median of the data. So this is how you will draw a histogram, a normal histogram. So let's minimize this and click on graph, histogram. This time I'm going to draw an histogram and I'm also trying to fit a distribution to it. So I select this option. This time I take point of sale machine one. So this is a point of sale machine manufactured by an electronic company. So every time I swipe my debit or credit card, how much time it takes for the transaction to get completed. So that data is being collected. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit distribution. And in fitting distribution, there are two options. So now I can, this option is already checked and it says normal distribution. But you see here the mean and standard deviation columns are left to blank. So what is the meaning? The meaning is if I click OK and if I then click OK, you will get a distribution. Oh, just a minute. So in reference line, I have some data before. So let me delete the data. So if you see this histogram, 
This histogram is drawn with a frequency distribution table. However, the Minitab has calculated the average and standard deviation. And based on that average and standard deviation, Minitab has tried to fit a normal distribution curve and see how much of the data is falling in this normal distribution curve. This is the objective of this exercise. Now, in Minitab, if we press Control E, it will take us to the previous screen. Now I go to Data View. I go to Distribution. So instead of leaving these two columns blank, for example, this data, I already have it in my Excel file. So if you see this Excel file, the normal uh, average of this data is 5.9 and standard deviation is 0 0.588. So this mini tab distribution will also have average. So the red line drawn now will have an average 5.9 and standard deviation of 0 0.588. But if I try to enter some value here, for example, I'm going to enter four, let's assume, and standard deviation as 0 0.5. Earlier, I didn't enter anything. I just said fit distribution. Minitab calculated an average and standard deviation. And based on that, Minitab has come up with this particular distribution fit. But if I enter some value here, and then if I click OK, and then if I click OK, what I will get is I will see, I will get a distribution based on the average and standard deviation that I have entered. And on top of that, Minitab will try to see how much of the data get covered here. Right. So in this case, if you see if my expectation is if a transaction need to be completed uh, on an average four seconds with a standard deviation of 0 0.5 seconds, if that is my expected performance, however, the actual data is completely different from that. That's why the actual histogram is not fitting anywhere into my expected distribution that I try to create. So this is the second thing that we can do. We can draw a histogram. We can try to fit a distribution to the given histogram data, or we can also try to fit a distribution which I already expect. And against that, how is this data uh, you know, getting created as a histogram and what is the difference? This is the second thing that we can do. <coughs> Sorry. The next thing that we can do is here I have, let's assume, two POS machines. POS machines from supplier one, POS machine from supplier two. So if I click on graph, if I go to histogram, and if I go to histogram with fitted line model, I go to data view and distribution. Let me remove these values. Let it create a normal distribution with a fitted line for the given data. Let's not try it against any particular machine. Right? So I remove this and then I say, okay. Similarly, in reference lines also, I don't want to have any uh, line at any point of time. So in reference line also, I'll ensure there is no value enter. Now, if I click OK, you get a histogram for POS machine one and a corresponding distribution for the average and standard deviation of this machine. Now, if I press Control E and instead of POS machine one, if I select POS machine two, and then if I say OK, then what I will get is I will get the same histogram. This time the distribution is fitted based on machine two and its corresponding data. Now what we can do is we can click on graph. We can go to histogram. And instead of selecting this option, now I'm going to select this option. And why do we select this option? It helps us to compare the variation of POS machine one against POS machine two. Between these two machines, which one has a smaller average and a better standard deviation because this is turnaround time to complete one digital transaction. So lesser the time, customer will be more happy. So which machine has a lesser average and which machine have a relatively lesser standard deviation? If I want to graphically compare that, I can select this option and I can click OK. And now I can select POS machine one and POS machine two, and then I can say OK. And if I say OK, I will get both the histograms in the same scale, and you'll also have the corresponding distributions that get fit. So if you see here, the blue line is for POS machine one, and the red line is for POS machine two. And in this, it is very evident that machine one is having a relatively lesser average because the peak is somewhere here compared to machine two. So machine one takes less time to perform one transaction, somewhere around six seconds. 
whereas mission two takes somewhere around seven seconds. And also from a standard deviation point of view, the spread of the data will graphically tell you the amount of variation in the data. So here in this case, the red color graph indicates there is a wider variation, whereas the blue color graph indicates there is a relatively less variation. So both from a variation standpoint, as well as from an average standpoint, POS machine one is doing a better job than POS machine two. So this we can understand by drawing a, a combined uh, histogram, both uh, data in the same scale. On top of it, if at all you wanted to draw some reference line and understand, so let me click on graph. So let me click on histogram. Let me go back to the broken chips data. So here I take broken chips data. And now let's assume I wanted to see uh, how many intervals have data points more than 15. Let's assume I wanted to check how many of these frequency distribution intervals have data point more than 15. So what I can do, I can click on scale. I can click on reference line. And here, show reference line at Y value 15. Let's assume I'm entering Y value 15. And then I say, OK. And then I say, OK. And in data view, distribution is already selected. But this being number of broken chips, it may not follow normal distribution. But still, let's see. I say, OK. If you see this, out of all the distributions or all the frequency distribution intervals we have, there are three frequency distribution intervals. If I keep my mouse pointer on this, bin 7.5 to 8.5, bin 8.5 to 9.5, and bin 9.5 to 10.5. These three bins have number of data points beyond 15. So this is where you have majority of your data points. So if you use the reference line, if you try to find out where how many pins have data points more than a particular value, you can have this reference line created. And similarly, if you want to have reference line in your x axis, so what you are seeing now is a reference line in your y axis. Now, if you want to see reference line in your x axis, let's click on graph, let's go to histogram. And in histogram, we will select this uh, fitted line that is with the distribution. So this time, instead of POS. Machine one, we will take POS machine two, and we will go to scale, and we will go to reference line. This time, we will try and understand how many data points or how many pins are falling anywhere between 4.5 seconds. I give a space, and then I give 6.5 seconds. Because 4.5 to 6.5 is what I understand as a meaningful interval within which I would expect more data points. So I am creating. So when you wanted to draw multiple lines in your x-axis or y-axis, you can give a space between the values. Then it can, it can help you draw multiple lines. So here I have given 4.5 space, 6.5. And then I click OK. And then again, I click OK. So you will get a histogram where you will have lines. Because 4.5 to 6.5 is the meaningful data within which or meaningful time within which you want your uh, debit card or credit card transaction to be completed. So this is the line. So similarly, in a given histogram, if you wanted to draw a line at multiple places, you can use this option. Friends, let me quickly summarize. In this video, we understood how to draw a single histogram, how to draw a histogram for a single variable with fitted distribution, how to draw a histogram for a single variable and with an expected distribution, how to draw histogram with multiple variables in the same scale and compare their average and variation. And we also saw how to draw a reference line in your y-axis and how to draw a reference line in your x-axis. So when you are graphically trying to represent any data and uh, try to communicate the amount of variation in the data, histogram is a very good tool. And in Minitab, you can use all these options that I discussed to give a better understanding of what you want to communicate to your audience. I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching. We will again connect on another video where we will study some more topics of how to use Minitab for a graphical representation, statistical analysis. Thank you for watching.